This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-220-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box. Then click Send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public meeting. Click the Handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue in the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar. Or send an email to chuck at valerin-group.com to report it. You may also call 813-527-1276. Staff will do their best to assist you. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed changes. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-414. 4753, or email at jacqueline.paramore at .fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. This project is located in Orange County along North Orange Avenue, also known as State Road 527. The project begins at Magnolia Avenue and ends just north of Rollins Street. The project corridor is in the city of Orlando. The Financial Project Identification Number, or FPID, for this project is 445-220-1. This project is the result of many studies, starting with a 2019 vision study by the city of Orlando and a Multi-Mobility Safety Assessment, or MMSA, conducted by the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, in September of 2019. The MMSA identifies roadways with high demand for multiple modes of transportation and recommends improvements that would enhance the mobility, access, and safety of all users. Based on these findings, the department devised a plan of improvement that will be the subject of this presentation. 
The purpose of this project is to enhance public safety for all users and to resurface this portion of North Orange Avenue, State Road 527, to extend the life of the roadway. Now, let's look at some of the specific improvements proposed for this project. The section of the project from Magnolia Avenue to Highland Avenue includes repurposing the outside travel lanes into on-street parking and construction of a new raised intersection at North Orange Avenue and Highland Avenue. For a better idea of what this lane repurposing might look like, let's look at a cross section, also called a typical section, that shows how this part of the roadway looks right now. Currently, there are two travel lanes in each direction. The proposed changes would convert the outside travel lanes into on-street parking in both directions. Note the curb extensions and the floater islands, which provide safer conditions for drivers and pedestrians by encouraging slower speeds, shielding on-street parking, preventing motorists from parking too close to intersections, and providing additional opportunities for bus stop locations as well as future landscaping. The studies performed for this project show that the lane repurposing will have minimal impact to traffic flow and that a two-lane roadway will be able to accommodate typical vehicle traffic in this area. Additionally, the increased parking and landscaping opportunities are expected to support the area's economic development. A new raised intersection will be constructed at North Orange Avenue and Highland Avenue. Raised intersections raise the entire intersection footprint flush with the sidewalk. Raised intersections help reinforce slower speeds, encourage motorists to yield to pedestrians at crosswalks, and reduce the distance a pedestrian must cross. These measures result in enhanced pedestrian safety. The lane repurposing continues north into the next segment of the project from Highland Avenue to Ivanhoe Boulevard. Additional enhancements within this section include constructing a new raised traffic separator between Virginia Drive and Ivanhoe Boulevard. The raised traffic separator will improve traffic operations and safety by providing an exclusive southbound turn lane to Virginia Drive and northbound turn lane to Ivanhoe Boulevard. This section of the project also includes construction of a second raised intersection located at North Orange Avenue and Ivanhoe Boulevard. The second raised intersection is located at North Orange Avenue and Ivanhoe Boulevard. In addition to raising the intersection, the curb line along the east side of the roadway will be extended to reduce the distance that pedestrians need to cross the roadway. The segment of the project from Ivanhoe Boulevard to north of Harvard Street will be repaved and include new signing and pavement marking features. This section of the project also includes construction of a new raised pedestrian crosswalk. The new raised crosswalk will be constructed just north of Vanderbilt Street. Raised crosswalks are ramp speed tables that span the entire width of the roadway. These crosswalks act as traffic calming measures that allow the pedestrian to cross at grade with the sidewalk. This new raised crosswalk will include rectangular rapid flashing beacons, or RRFBs. An RRFB is a type of pedestrian activated lighted crosswalk that improves safety and visibility for pedestrians. RRFBs also help calm traffic, reduce driving speeds, and give motorists advance warnings so that they have plenty of time to yield to pedestrians. Let's take a closer look at what an RRFB might look like in action. A rectangular rapid flashing beacon, or RRFB, consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights that are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. The flashing lights remain dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs are installed to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk to help pedestrians who need to cross. 
Let's look at how a pedestrian will interact with the RRFB. Upon approaching the crosswalk, the beacon will be dark and cars will be proceeding normally. Pedestrians are encouraged to push the button to activate the beacon, thus making their intent to cross more noticeable to motorists. Upon pressing the button to activate the signal, pedestrians may enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or if no traffic is present closer than a safe stopping distance. Pedestrians will notice the flashing yellow lights or supplemental lights on the side of the RRFB to let them know the device has been activated. The flashing lights on the beacon will continue for a short time, allowing pedestrians to cross. Finally, after pedestrians have completed crossing and the RRFB has stopped flashing, any approaching pedestrians will have to press the button again to activate the RRFB, repeating the cycle. Now, let's look at how a motorist will interact with the RRFB. The RRFB's default state is dark until a pedestrian presses a button to cross. The motorist may proceed with caution if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Once a pedestrian presses the button, indicating they're ready to cross, the yellow lights begin to flash rapidly. The motorist must stop or clear the crossing if they are too close to stop safely. Motorists must remain stopped while pedestrians cross. The beacon will continue to flash and motorists may proceed once the pedestrians clear their lane. Finally, the beacons will return to dark and motorists may proceed with traffic when there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk. The beacons will remain dark until a new pedestrian approaches the crossing and presses the button. The final segment of the project from north of Harvard Street to north of Rollins will be milled and resurfaced to extend the life of the pavement. Additional improvements include new signing and pavement features and reconstruction of ADA curb ramps. This project is also coordinating improvements proposed under the Princeton Street Intersection Improvement Project, FPID 445-692-1. With all these changes, coordination with local stakeholders and emergency services is important. The FDOT is continuously coordinating their efforts with Lynx and Advent Health, as well as all emergency services for both the City of Orlando and Orange County. Moving forward, the design on this project is in progress and anticipated to be complete in fall 2023 with a total cost of $1 million. The improvements on this project will be constructed entirely within the existing right-of-way and therefore will not require property acquisition. Construction for this project is anticipated to begin in early 2024 at an estimated cost of $2.9 million. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by August 29th, 12 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. Those attending in person are invited to ask questions and share feedback with the project team during the meeting. To submit a comment for the project's public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. To submit a comment or question online, please type the comment or question in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-220-1. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at joseph.fontanelli at dot.fl.us or by U.S. mail 
at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 542, Deland, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5234 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 445220-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by Monday, August 29, 2022. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445 220-1. Have a good evening.